I don't know whether I should say welcome back uh, to Supersport because I'm not part of Supersport, but I'm just going to say tell us about your turnaround uh, in terms of you coming back to Supersport, your journey, how it has been in the wilderness, if I may use that term. Yeah, it's been um, a couple of months. You, you're yeah. Back here, I know. yeah. Look, obviously, um, let's just go back a little bit. The sale of Bidvest affected us all. You know, everybody lost their jobs. You know. In, in the internal staff, well, the players obviously all got, found, you know, got most of them, all of them got clubs, so we couldn't have done a bad job there. Um, and that obviously put us there, out there, you know, to, and obviously the opportunity came up there and I went there. Obviously timing sometimes doesn't always affect it. And I thought uh, when this came up, I think the timing is right. You know, I think it's, um, it's a good opportunity to gain, to build another team, um, to just build on from what they've had here before um, and, and go from there, you know. Where do you start? At the back. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wouldn't say at the back, no, I don't mean it like that. Fun. I think um, yeah, they've, got, they've, they've certainly got a, a nucleus of a team. It's not like it's you know, starting from scratch. What we need to do is obviously the younger players because of the, of the market. We need to look at the younger players that they've got that have come through the system, they did very well last season, uh, look at them, I need to give that a good, honest assessment, um, and then obviously see where and how, what we can do, you know, if, we, like any football team, uh, they're always going to need something here and there, you know. But it's just us to understand about your input on the transfer window, surely this has been one of the seasons where many players have been offloaded by the exactly. You've I been think sitting there watching. Anything? Well, that that obviously was one of the part of the discussions uh, going forward because the longer we leave it, the longer things are moving, and the longer your time is getting short. So I really don't have much time, you know, to to uh, with the team because the first game's on the fifth of uh, August. Okay. So you know, we less than four weeks in, where you should have a good six to seven weeks where you can really have a look. You know, if you were. So yeah, it's dragged out a little bit here and there, but um, it still gives us gives me confidence. Obviously, it's easy for me knowing the league, knowing what's available, how, what, you know, what we need, and then. But certainly, to by tomorrow, I've got to look at the team very closely. Coach, um, you, you gave a reason why you left the first time to, to a podcast uh, recently overseas guys, and the club had lost its ambition. They had the ambition that you sought. There's kind of a similar outlook at the moment. They've lost a lot of good players, and there's a talk of Ronald Williams was supposed mm. to sign down. Is that ambition really, really there that you see? Yeah, uh, uh, listen, the PSL has changed completely. It's, 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 it's since COVID, I don't know if it's COVID or whatever, but it's changed completely. I think the pool has got smaller and smaller of players, of really players that are available, you know, because possibly one club or two clubs have taken a lot of the players. Um, so it, it, it's a different model now from when I first came here. You know, I mean, I walked into this team, there was a lot of players that was obviously, also we had a lot of rebuild, we brought players in, but there was, a, there was established players, you know, and uh, with good young players as well, with Ron Wins in the under 18s and these type of things. Now it's a little bit, it's turned on its head a little bit where, and I think most clubs, are looking at their youth and bringing in a lot of younger players. Where this club has got a good youth academy, which obviously is a big attraction for me. It's not like willy nilly. It's a it's academy that's a proper structure and, and, and proper alignment to to the first team, which is something that I got involved with when I was here for six years, seven years, from Pitzer's time. You know, with me. So yeah, I think it's um, it's a different. It, it's it's exciting for me. I'm really excited about it. You know, and I wouldn't say. I've, I've given, I would say I've given a lot of young players a chance right back to seven stars, I mean, 95, 94, you know, so. Any regrets, coach, with you coming through back to the team, I mean, having left the team some time ago? I was here six years. I, I got an offer an opportunity that somebody wanted to, to do something which they've never done before. They felt it was right, and we did it in 100 years, first time, and they'll never do it in another, because there's no club now. Um, so we did it uh, at a small club like that, which was on, on a budget which was tight, 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 and which was fantastic. So that was the project, and you know I think, and we won every cup as well. So yeah, it was a great project. So this is another, but this is different, I think, and it's exciting for me. 
uh, to see what's available, what they haven't got available. Coach, I asked you earlier about uh, what you had learned from your previous coaching experiences. Are you scarred in any way? I mean, nah. didn't really work out. Yeah, well, it was just, you know. Um, no, nah, not really. No. Nah. It just makes you more aware, more streetwise, that's all. I mean, just to. But it's nothing, it's nothing new, you know what I'm saying? Because it's the same, same sort of things. No, it was great. It was fantastic. Do it again? Yeah, do it again. But obviously, we got pushed into a situation because of selling the club. I mean, you know, I mean, I helped all those players get deals. You know what I'm saying? You know, in, you know indirectly. I wasn't the agent, but I'm saying I helped them get clubs and uh, things like that, you know. But, but you look like you're still carrying some head from the vets disappearing yeah well it was because it was a club we would have won the league again we would have won the league the last three four years we would, we would definitely we would, it was going again you know there was another rebuild and and you know teams have cycles four mm. years three four years you know if you can keep a group together and that team is in the next cycle so it was disappointing yeah but I mean that's gone it's history football doesn't stand still we move forward and uh, and this is exciting for me and I'm really looking forward to this you know coach um, what were you up to during the Well, obviously, you're looking from the outside. You're looking in at football. You go, I went to a lot of games actually. Well, I didn't. I watched a lot of games, which is, you know, um, obviously I went overseas. I was at Man City, and you know, watched the trainings and this and that. Went to games, and I was down in Brentford, and just to refresh a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's good for you sometimes. But actually, not for me because I'm not that type of guy. I don't need those breaks. So it wasn't good. Actually, it wasn't good for me, <laughs> but it was it was good in a way just to have a look, you know. Anything new you think you can implement? I tell you what, what 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 was interesting was it just reiterated the things that I've been trying to do that we're doing, you know. So you see a lot of the things, and I'm thinking, well, you know. So that also gives you a little bit of confidence to say that we're on the right track. Is it fit to what demands what we need here? Maybe not, but or a little bit. But that's that's also refreshing, you know. So of course, you years ago you, you set the bar here first and the last coach to win a league title does that make the expectations a bit difficult for you now well obviously wherever you go you're going to be expected to 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 win because of what's what's happened in the past but i mean that's the past in football is sometimes it goes you know people don't, don't remember that too much but i'm more you know challenged and more determined to try and improve to find ways because times have changed players have changed mentality the youngsters of today are totally different to five years ago Social media, these type of things is huge now, you know. Are they as tough and hard as they were five years ago? I don't know. Maybe not, but, you know, there's an old saying in life, the older you get, the better you used to think you were. But that changes very quickly, so you need to change your ways, otherwise you've got no chance. You just spoke about social media and your daughter is one that's the biggest fan of yours. Is she? And she, yeah. I don't actually, you know, I don't see it. she speaks a lot about no, you she and she what knows you do on social she, media. She actually knows more football than me. <laughs> yeah, and coming to super sport, coming back to super sport rather, Have you spoken to any of your family members, including that? Yeah, my, yeah my, my, both my girls, are, they're both coaches. They coach in the girls football with Janine and, and the one, you know. So they're both coaches, they, they love the game and that's it, yeah. Coach, um, has your attitude changed towards um, this whole thing of uh, you know, football signs and all this and stuff? It's amazing you get labelled, eh? It's amazing. Somebody says something and you get labelled, eh? It's amazing, eh? Yeah. I'd love to know. I know it is. Uh, no, of course. Mm. Course. It's never been. I've never been away from it. I've always been up to date with it. I look at everything, you know. Look at every angle. But uh, you, football's got to rule those things. You can't have that, that rule in football. And I think that's where you got to be very careful. You know. I still think uh, the smell and the feel of a dressing room. You're not going to find that in the computer. You know. You got to understand uh, what needs to be said and what needs to be done. It's no good talking. You need action on things. So creating muscle memory is very important in football. I heard you, sorry, that's yeah. a follow-up. I heard you the other day we were doing analysis on TV talking about uh, this new rest defense thing that you said you don't understand what the hell that is. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, yeah, what are you resting the whole 90... Uh, yeah, uh, you, you know what happens is like uh, the word, what's the other word, transition. It's counter-attack. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, so people jump onto words in football that sounds like they know what they're talking about, but what is it really? Uh, I mean, all these rust, what's it, what's it rest defense? Eh? <laughs> It's like uh, critical phases. Sure. I mean, it <laughs> should be one to 90 minutes, isn't it? I mean, it's a critical phase. They say, yes, obviously before half-time, after half-time, because that's when the focus goes and the end of the games, you go, well, you, but you can't be people throwing these things in, you know, sometimes it goes a little bit. 
So yeah, rest defense. I love that. What are they resting? So when the other opposition can score. Yeah. Hallelujah. Here's a man. Here's a man of my word. Here's a man that understands it. I think we sometimes players. Uh, you've got to be very careful with these things. You know, players looking at you and and the half. What's it? The other ones half spaces and, and be very careful. Zone one, zone two, and zone three and all that. Yeah. Someone will say you're old school. Though. It's not old school. I believe in what they're saying. I understand what they're saying. But sometimes if I tell you, you must play in the half space in zone one. <laughs> you understand me? Yeah, you understand me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Stan and I will talk as we go along. I say, I, let me get in there tomorrow and have a look and, and take it day by day. And, but obviously, you know, time is short in football. This is windows of opportunities, you know, for the players. So we need to look at that. Yeah. You come in and find Andre and Tavo here. Um, what, are you, what are you looking forward to? You know, from them and well, Andre, Andre and I have got lots of history. I played together, you know, played for me, uh, worked together, and so on. You know, I know him before he was even married. You know, and kids and so um, we, Tavo obviously was my captain here for the time being at at, uh, at SuperSport. You know, he's making his way. Andre obviously. He's gained more on the coaching side now, away from it, which is good, which has happened for him. And that's fantastic. And obviously, I'll encourage him to do whatever he has to do, and and we can chat and bounce things off. And and, and, and obviously, Roscoe's here, and Grant is here. You know, so I mean, that's what that's what SuperSport's got. They got that, you know, stability, and I like that. Oh, and obviously, sometimes less is better. More is more problems. Less is better, and I like less. And I think um, you look at all the top coaches around the world. It was interesting with Pep and that. Less, you, know, you don't, don't want, just less is better. Thank uh, you guys. Thanks, Coach. Thank you guys.